To hoist Russia to the level of other European nations, Catherine the Great also encouraged the birth of a national art. In 1764, the Tsarina founded the Russian Academy of Arts. Opposite the Winter Palace, the monumental facade stands proudly on the banks of the Neva. Designed by French architect Valin de la Motte, the building was organized around a vast 50 meters diameter circular court, the size of the Pantheon in Rome. For me, it's typical of the 18th century taste for architectural excess. Construction was carried out without worrying about dimensions. The French brought this taste for excess to the Russian court, and this is how they saw Russia. Pupils attended the school from the age of six and lived there with their teachers. Catherine wanted Russians to be able to create true masterpieces too. In order to achieve this goal, she provided them with magnificent sculptors she brought from Italy. Thanks to these plaster casts from Italy, students learned body proportions. It was the basis of their work. And then they learned to draw the body in motion. Through this, they got a better grasp of their art. The program hasn't changed since the time of Catherine the Great. The Academy continues to teach figurative art in the purest classical tradition. Today, it trains students from all over the world. The Russian Academy of Arts houses many other treasures, like this unique collection of models. The Empress had a constant desire for construction, but before embarking on new projects, she demanded that architects present her with miniature building models, not plans. At the time, the construction of models required several months of work. Catherine the Great made the city what it is today. At the time of her death in 1796, her accomplishments were considerable. The people of St. Petersburg are very proud of these monuments. During Catherine's reign, the Dance Academy was modernized in order to achieve world recognition. Guardian of a 150-year legacy, the Marinsky Theater symbolizes the excellence of the Russian ballet. The Baroque-style building was constructed in 1860 as an homage to Empress Maria Alexandrovna, Alexander II's wife. In Russia, all ballerinas dream of dancing at the Marinsky. Thousands of hopefuls try their luck every year. Elena came to the Marinsky six years ago. Now 30 years old, she has just graduated to first soloist. She still has another hurdle to overcome before becoming prima ballerina. She realized her dream of dancing at the Marinsky Theatre's mythical stage. This is the place where the greatest stars danced, like Václav Nijinsky or the famous Rudolf Nureyev. The crystal chandeliers, the gildings, nothing is left to chance.
The turquoise color was chosen because it's a soft color that isn't aggressive on the eyes and gold because it was an imperial theater. These colors don't distract the spectators who remain focused on what is happening on the stage. So the marriage of turquoise and gold is an ideal one. When she's not on tour, Elena trains here every day. She knows every nook and cranny of the Marinsky. In the workshop where they store all the costumes, hundreds of tutus reflect the evolution of dance since the time of Catherine the Great. In the old days, costumes were very heavy. Ballet was very different then. You weren't allowed high jumps or fast pirouettes. There was a reason for that. You couldn't show your legs. It was unimaginable even to get a glimpse of a ballerina's ankle. All they saw was a little bit of shoe. But if the fans could see just part of an ankle, they were ecstatic. After 10 years of renovation, the Marinsky has once again opened its doors to the public. It's the extension of the historical theater of St. Petersburg, and together, these two monuments are among the most beautiful cultural buildings in the world. 